You're listening to The Business Marketing Show, episode number 51. You can find us at businessmarketingshow.com on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. Hi everyone, this is Ed K. Smith from The Business Marketing Show, here today with our special guest Hayden Stevenson from Staged.com. Now, I met uh, Hayden uh, back in Tokyo in uh, 2014, so last year, uh, sorry, 2015, I'm doing well, I don't even know my dates, and uh, <laughs> we were at an internet marketing conference uh, called Netpreneur Summit. And uh, we, we caught up there and I learnt uh, a lot more about Hayden and what he's been doing with stage.com. So well, I thought we'll have him on the show and he can tell us all about what it is. So welcome, Hayden. Thanks for coming on, mate. Hey, thanks very much for the invite, man. It's really, uh, really a pleasure, you know. It's, you're uh, you're welcome. Exciting. You're welcome indeed, mate. So you are actually in Japan as we speak. I'm in Perth, uh-huh. so we're, we're talking uh, not really across the globe because you're sort of up above and up a little bit uh, to, to the right from where I am, um, but you're still far away from me. But the connection sounds like you're in the next room, so that's always a good thing. Fantastic. I dare say the weather's probably a little bit different over there. It's raining like a, like a bad word. Oh, like, a bad, <laughs> like a bad word, yeah. yeah. We've, yeah, had, yeah. we've had a little bit of strange weather, but no, we're, we're in the middle of our summer at the moment in, in Australia, so it's pretty warm. It's about 35 degrees, so um, yeah, it's nice and, t- nice and toasty and sometimes humid. So, But yeah, so we, so we met in 2015. I, I'm still having adjusted to the fact that it's 2016, which is why I said 2014 in my introduction. <laughs> so uh, I've I got to get with the program. I'm still writing down date saying 2015 i haven't quite got there yet usually i catch up in february so um, <laughs> but we were at that fantastic uh, event the netpreneur summit where i was presenting on a few different things and uh, we managed to catch up and uh, got on well and you've got an interesting story and you've got a fantastic uh, service and product that you've been working on for several years now uh, stage.com which is uh, a twitter marketing platform and uh, I thought, well, this is perfect. Uh, I know really nothing about Twitter. I'll put my hand up and say I'm, I couldn't even claim to be a, uh, not even a Twitter expert. A, a Twitter novice would probably be what I'd be classified as. Gotcha. Uh, so I thought, well, we'll get someone on to uh, give our audience something else to uh, hear about that we typically don't speak about. So, um, so tell us a little bit of a backstory about Hayden, who he is, where he comes from. I did, you know, I know you're originally from New Zealand because you've got that New Zealand accent happening still. You can't get yeah, <laughs> you can you can take the boy out of New Zealand, but you can't take the New Zealand out of the boy. Correct? So that's so true. <laughs> you know, I've been I've been I've been in Japan for twenty years. You know, and I still I still can't uh, lose the accent. It, I must I must admit though, it does get softened. Like I I don't get like if someone meets me first straight off there, I usually don't. I get oh you're from New Zealand. I usually get. Uh, Oh, you must be from South Africa or from somewhere. Usually not New Zealand's not usually not the first choice. Yeah, oh, yeah, that often happens. I think Australians probably get it right more often because we we have a lot of New Zealanders uh, in Australia and we're, we're right next door. We're we're, we're neighbours, um, so we, I think we probably tend to get it accurate compared to most. But maybe I'm wrong. You could disagree with me on that one. Uh, <laughs> but, but I know a lot of people who are from overseas uh, in other countries, not Australia or New Zealand, often get the two mixed. Mixed yeah, up, mixed same, up. same. So tell us a bit about your back history, sort of um, what what led you to the point of what you're doing with your business. So uh, go, go back to when you uh, left New Zealand and what you were doing in New Zealand before you went to Japan. Okay, well, actually, you know, it sort of starts back before I left New Zealand, actually. You know, um, it, it kind of this, this certain mindset that I developed from from certain tragedies and certain things that happened to me that kind of led to the path. But So there's actually there's a, a high likelihood of me being the basis of the of the movie Unbreakable. You know, the one with, uh, with uh, what's his name, Bruce Willis? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, well, not only do we share the same haircut, but I, I think that they modeled the movie on me because I've managed to escape certain death at least 14 times so far. Yes. So I've been, <laughs> You've so I've been hit around. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you saw that scar on the side of my head. I got this. Yeah, it's yeah. A, so it's a it's a real chick magnet, actually. But you know, so I've I've undergone brain surgery. I've been shot at. I've been drowned. I mean, I don't know how many times I've been drowned. 
Um, I've managed to save people's lives as well, so there was a bit of give and take there. Um, we've, and I've, just, I've just done stupid things as being a kid growing up in New Zealand. I mean, I honestly, I don't know why I'm still alive. Yeah, so, I know. I mean, some of this, we, we uh, had a, quite a lengthy train journey together in Japan when we were going to, uh, where is it we were going, where you live? What's the name of it? I've had a mental blank. Kamakura. That's it. Kamakura. And um, went to the big Buddha there, which was interesting. But we managed to have a good chat and a catch up. And you're telling us some of those stories uh, as we were going along. And um, yeah, pretty pretty mind blowing. But the major one that happened, the the hit and run. Tell tell us that story. How, how, what happened there? Oh, uh, so I was <laughs> I was on the way to um, to the super, I was on the way back from the supermarket, and I was I was creating this project for uh, a science fair that we had at school, and I was going to make this geodesic dome out of out of straws, right? How, so I'm on the how way old back. were you at the time? I was eleven. Eleven. I was eleven. And I was on the way back, and uh, I was on my bike. I was on my brother's bike because he, he still hates me because I got his bike smashed up. And I was on the bike. And I was crossing the road, and whammo! I woke up and I woke up in the hospital. And I was looking at this uh, at this X ray chart of this, this skull, and it was all smashed up. And I was thinking, well, wow, wouldn't want to be that poor bugger, right? And <laughs> turns out, turns out it was me. And uh, the guy that did it is a serial hit and run guy. I mean, they eventually caught him, but apparently I was the third kid he's hit. Wow, that's and, scary. Like he's got this like a little, he's got must have like some laser guided thing on the front of his car or something, and he just goes after kids. Yeah. So he took me out, and um, I I underwent uh, uh, really uh, traumatic brain surgery. I was, on, I was in the uh, under the knife for about twelve hours or something, and um, and uh, the doctor said to my mother, "It's the best diet she's ever had." The doctor said to my mother, um, "Your son's either going to die or he's going to be a vegetable." That was the two choices, <laughs> and. Uh, and I had the. We, I used to be a Catholic at the time, and uh, the priest came and read me my last rites, and and everyone was really somber around me. And my mother dropped about, you know, short of about twenty kilos in weight just worrying about me, you know. Yeah. So uh, that was that. And then, uh, and yeah, look, that was that. Would be enough for one lifetime for anyone. Uh, but say <laughs> all the other things you've had, and we won't go into them all on this podcast. We should probably just do a a podcast like this for for, for another website <laughs> called "How to Survive Lots of oh. Near Death Experiences." But yeah, your your stories are are quite amazing. And uh, but say just to come through that one, um, and you know that's given you some challenges to deal with in your life, and you know in terms of the injuries that it sustained to to your brain, uh, totally. the fact that you're you know you're still functioning and alive. And relatively normal. I mean, I, I know you, you're, you're pretty normal. I mean, you're no, you're no, no less normal than me. So, uh, and I can't claim to have had a massive head injury that not I'm aware of, unless I was abducted by aliens or something. But um, <laughs> hey, you never know, mate. So, uh, so yeah. So, so when so all that sort of stuff happened, and you're a young lad in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, I, um, and then what happened? And then. You know, I grew up in a really small city, and uh, one of my dreams was I, I, I wanted to, this is from the age of 10, I always wanted to come to Japan and train one-on-one with a martial arts master, you know, like like Karate Kid. Actually, yeah, the, yep. I, actually, Karate Kid was the dream. I watched that, you know, Mr. Miyagi, I thought, man, I, I, want, I want that more than anything in my life. And this is from about the age of 10. And by the age of 19, coming from those really humble beginnings and having half my brain missing, I actually made that initial dream a reality, and I earned my black belt. Um, shortly after turning 22 yep. in in the cold mountains of northern Japan. I mean, it was like I used to train in like minus 33 inside, wow. inside the dojo, you know. And uh, the pain of training was so intense that I would sweat, even in, the, in those, you know, sub-zero temperatures, you know. Yeah, wow. Well. So, um, so that was another, that was another factor, you know, that once I achieved that dream, you know, if, if you'd known where I'd come from, to, and to get to that dream, it's like it really expanded my mind to what's possible, right? Mm. But as far as my business mindset goes, I, I believe my life was ruined, and I use that in quotation marks, the day I learned about the concept of leverage. Yeah. I mean, I mean, how can you settle into a regular job when you know there is virtually no leverage for you? You know, you get paid by the hour, you get paid by the month. Yeah. Either way, either way, there's a fixed ceiling to what you can earn while your boss is leveraging, leveraging you your co-workers and his business systems to make money for himself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, the, the, we, you do get um, exceptions to the rule in the higher up sort of uh, paid jobs, but 99.9% of people, yes, absolutely. They're pretty much, that's it. They know what they're making year in, year out. They may get some sort of pay increase, but unless they do something external from their work, that's that's it. They're on that set path. So, yeah, I'm, I'm – 
100% with you, I was ruined as well when I learned about the same principles. You, you, it's like being, it's like the matrix, mate. Once you take the red pill, you can never go back to a regular job. I mean, I did, <laughs> yeah. I've done regular jobs, but you can never, ever, uh, it's like, like when, what's his name, uh, Morpheus says, it's like a thorn in your brain. Remember that line he yes, uses? Yes, absolutely. Right? I love that. And, and, and you're doing this job and then you think, God, there's absolutely no leverage. I mean, if I stop work today, that, that's it, you know? Yeah. And this has never, ever left me, right? And so this came my, my dream, my passion, my drive, my everything, basically. I, I would even go as far as say it contributed to the structure of my marriage, right? Because I spent a considerable amount of time just thinking about the stuff, was to seek the ultimate leverage. And, you know, and it was love at first sight when I first discovered the internet. Yeah. And, uh, and that was like the, all the lights went on for me. I was like, this is leverage upon leverage upon leverage. And uh, through, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, I do believe in the law of attraction in some ways, but... You know, I'm a bit more of a realist and uh, just a bunch of things happened. And I managed to meet up with my business partner, my current business partner back in 2000. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an interesting story, but I want, it's, it'll draw out things for hours if I talk about it. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but our core focus, so, so when I started working with him, our core focus has always been providing web-based software solutions for small and home business owners right. uh, to help those people leverage technology to generate leads and sales for whatever they're doing, right? Uh-huh. And our past software product releases have pulled companies out from the brink of bankruptcy, some of them, yep. and have made um, a lot of people some very handsome incomes. One of them was a, a lady in the Philippines. Now, back when she – I'll tell you how much she made in a minute, but back then, a, an, a yearly weight salary was like 2000 US for a year, 2000 wow. bucks, right? Yeah. She made, using our software, $100,000 in one month. Wow. I know it was mine. I mean, she was like became queen of the village. She she hooked up water when they never had water. They she hooked up power. She she bought backup generators for the village and everything. And it was like really super empowering for us, right? That's fantastic. Um, and our our, re- our most recent and proudest releases were the one you've alluded to is staged. Yep. And um, and it was it's it's the one I'm honestly it's, I'm the one I'm most proud of of all. And uh, it's predominantly was predominantly created to leverage Twitter. To market and grow your business. Yeah, and so look, that's that's uh, that's basically me in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and that is definitely him in a nutshell because there's uh, there's a uh, say there's a couple of hours worth of uh, just getting Hayden's uh, backstory, which we obviously don't have the the time to go into on this podcast, but it is an amazing one. So um, if you ever get a chance <laughs> to contact and speak to Hayden, um, you've got some interesting stories coming your way. <laughs> but uh, that's part of life, and that's that's what makes it interesting is uh, hearing how other people have experienced life and learning from some of the things hopefully that they've had happen. So, but all all of these things lead you to the point that you're at now, and this is one of the the reasons we're talking about is to is to learn more about marketing using Twitter, and you have the predominant platform that everyone seems to be raving about at the moment, and because I know nothing about Twitter, I'm completely at your mercy. You could tell me anything about Twitter right now and I'd believe you. So uh, I know I know you're not going to try and pull my leg and you're going to tell us exactly how it is. But <laughs> so, but what what is it about Twitter that you like as a marketing platform? Because everyone goes on about Facebook and Google AdWords and other, uh, other tools and uh, Pinterest and Instagram, et cetera. Uh, and Twitter is talked about a lot, <clears throat> but most people – I don't know if they consider using it as a marketing tool probably the way they should. So, so what makes you like Twitter for a mar- as a marketing marketing tool, and how do you use it? Okay, that's a, that's a that's a fantastic question. You know, there's a great quote that I love to share that sums up why I'm so enamoured with Twitter. Actually, uh, the, and it goes like this: LinkedIn is for people you know, Facebook is the, for the people you used to know, Twitter is for the people you want to know. And uh, the guy that wrote that right. didn't didn't fess up to it. It's an anonymous quote, but for me, that really sums it up. Um, okay, cool. It's uh, it's one that I'm actually when I redo the site, I'm going to put that on it because I think that just speaks volumes for me. Um, I'm <clears throat> I hang out on Facebook a lot, um, but my fishing ground, my hunting ground, if, you know, to be a little bit crash, is Twitter because it's just, I mean, it's just wide open. It's like it's like the f- true freedom of speech. You can say and do anything you like. On Twitter, so you know, good and bad, good and bad. I mean, I wouldn't let my kids necessarily loose on Twitter too much, but um, yeah, it is a bit like the Wild West, but it's mm-hmm. it's no holds barred. And also, you know, the people on Twitter. I mean, no offense to Facebook people, but the people on Twitter do tend to be a little bit more tech savvy because there's a little bit more, you know, it's not necessarily working past it, but it's not as intuitive 
as Facebook, you know? Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that because the majority of people I know, they're not using Twitter. There may be a few here and there, but uh, they're not using it, which, which, is, which makes me think there is an opportunity there uh, to, 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 for people to get involved with. And if your tool can make it easier to do that, then all the better. So typically, who would you recommend looks at using Twitter as a marketing tool? Is is there any areas which, which you don't think are, are viable? Well, actually, do you, do you mind if I just continue that track about Twitter That's, for a second? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Go is for it. That, is that cool? Because I've got a couple more points that are, that are kind of prudent that we'll, we'll flesh it out a bit more for people. So. Go for it. No problem. Cool. Thanks, mate. Um, so I believe that I, I really believe that no long term social media strategy is complete without Twitter. That's how really um, passionate I am about it. And I also believe that if you if you've not found your path to success with social media marketing, and uh, you're looking for a place to start, here are some good reasons to start with Twitter. Right. So um, Twitter is is a valid interaction place for every topic. Honestly, mate, there's no topic on earth that does not have a reachable audience on Twitter. Okay. Um, okay. Right. So that's point one. Point two is Twitter is reliable. You know, Twitter does sometimes make small changes, but it does not make big changes to a system that will suddenly crash the traffic you drive from it. You know, there's no algorithm determining whether your posts are going to be shown to your followers. There's no, you know, only 6% of people see your stuff. Every If you post something, every single person has the potential of seeing it. Right. But there's, right. No, there's no dirty stuff going on behind the scenes. There's no, you know, big brother trying to squash your post. It, everyone has the opportunity to see it. So that's another thing I like. Uh, the third one, Twitter is a place where, you know, you can openly reach out to other members, you know, as long as you behave yourself, obviously, and you can build relationships with people that you'd be really extremely hard pressed to meet in, in your daily life. And you'd probably never, ever get to meet them on Facebook, you know, yeah, like, okay. you know, I mean, I've, I've, um, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, mm -hmm. um, I've, I've had discussions with that guy, yep. you know, and this guy, I mean, the guy's worth squillions. Um, he's retweeted my stuff. Um, you know, guys like Tony Robbins, you can you, you can comment on his stuff and he'll get back to you. I mean, how, how, how's that happening on Facebook and these other places? It's yeah, like, yeah, you, yeah, don't, yeah. you don't hear of it so often, right? Yeah. Um, and if another one, fourth point is, if treated right, I I really believe this. Twitter is the most reliable one of the one of the most reliable traffic sources on the planet. You might not drive as much traffic per tweet as you might for you know for some Facebook posts, but it is possible to drive tens of thousands of clicks per month. From Twitter and with with stage, we're seeing that it's with it's you know it's empirical. Um, yeah, people yeah. that use stage get tens of thousands of views of this stuff every month. It's like if they don't, it's like oh Hayden, it's broken. That's the only reason why they'd ever say that to me. Yeah, okay. Uh, so that's that's another thing. Um, and Twitter lends and here this is for me is one of the biggest, the biggest, biggest, biggest is that. Twitter lends itself gloriously to leveraging, that's my favorite word, right? Leveraging automation technology to take care of the, the mindless monkey work, you know, while you can focus on the stuff that really makes the money, you know. And, of course, that is engaging with others and developing business relationships. Yes. And, um, and my stage is we're all about um, taking care of the mindless monkey work. You know, if, I was, if someone pinned, put a gun to my head and said, uh, yeah, you know, what's your company do? I'd say that's what we do. We take care of the mindless monkey work. So you can do the stuff that's fun, talk to people, and and building the trust. Yeah, um, yeah. great, great. I, that's I mean that's the thing. We don't we want to use these tools and get the most out of them. But if we can automate the tools, uh, then that just say alleviates all that wasted time and things that are boring and you can get down to the the nitty gritty to really get the most out of the platform so and um that that's great and that's you know that's why i'm interested in using staged um and i, I think maybe in some ways i'm fortunate because i don't have a, a whole lot of twitter history that no. i'm sort of coming to it pretty fresh i mean i've used it here and there, but I've you know I've probably used one percent of what it could do. That that would be, and even that would be a stretch. So, I, <laughs> so I, th I think if there's a lot of people listening to this who haven't used Twitter or who've completely dismissed Twitter, they should maybe start to go. Okay, I should go back and have a look at this and have a look at it through the fresh mind of Hayden and Stage. Then and then you may see different opportunities uh, appear to you that you wouldn't have thought of before. Would that be an accurate statement? You think? I would definitely say. I would definitely say. And my, I, yeah, everyone's got their own take on how to do. I guess you know, in quotation marks, do Twitter. Um, my take is is vastly different from other people. I'm not saying it's the best one, but when you when you apply leverage, uh, when you apply um, technology to 
to Twitter using my method, using my kind of my methodologies, mm-hmm. it will make sense to you, and it, and it will become systematic. I mean, I'm all about systems as well. I um, uh, systems and leverage. I mean, that's yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. So the, um, I've got two more points. Two more points that I want to say about Twitter. Just yep. um, yeah, go on for that. it. Go for it. Um, Twitter, Twitter can be used to grow your other social channels as well. You know, via cross promotion. So, point in case, I've got um, on Facebook, I've got four thousand and some, you know, and some change Facebook friends. And I calculated recently that roughly three thousand five hundred of those people came from Twitter. Right, so they were targeted people on Twitter in a niche that I was I was focused on at the time, uh-huh. and I hauled those people over to Facebook, and uh, and then I, I think Facebook has a, its strength lies in, you know, you can really you can really get to know people a lot deeper because they've got their pictures of their families and their dogs and their hobbies and their you know they've gone on holidays and all sort of stuff, and you yeah. can like and engage them. That's that's where Facebook strength lies, right? So I find the people on Twitter, haul them over to Facebook, be you know really. You know, befriend them and and stuff like that. Build the relationship, and that leads obviously that leads down the road to to business and stuff like that. Commerce, you know. So, yeah, um, yeah. but but of four thousand friends, three and a half thousand came from Twitter. I've I probably I've probably reached out to people on Facebook saying, "Hey, be my friend." Honestly, I could say, hand on heart, about a hundred times, they've all come to me. Right. Okay. So, and that's the best place you want to be. You want people coming to you, wanting to be your friend. You don't want to be the the you don't want to be the guy that you know who's at the pub going up and you know hitting on all the chicks. That's just not a cool place to be, right? You no, want to no. be the person that hit, you want to be the person that gets hit upon. Yeah, yeah, yeah never worked for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that mate, mate, not for me either. You know, not for me. Not for me. Not for me. So no, that's a fantastic point. Fantastic and, point. And the last one, this will this will kind of appeal to you, I guess, and 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 marketers in general is that Twitter is a great place to learn marketing and test your headlines because. Um, Twitter only has 140 characters, so each tweet is essentially uh, a headline, you know. And so you might have a tweet with with a link. So the the tweet itself, its job is to get the person to go, oh, what's this? Yeah, yeah. And click on the link to go through for more information because 140 characters is not you can't really do that much with it. So it really teaches, trains your brain to condense and to think and to cut out all the fluff and to get the maximum impact in that in those within those uh, 140 character constraint. You know? Yeah, yeah, ab- absolutely. I, I read something um, recently. I think it was Jack Dorsey was saying that they're looking at expanding the 140 character limit to 10,000. Is that have you heard that, or is that just me imagining things? No, no, you're not imagining things. I've heard that as well. I'm not sure if it's a if it's a one of those urban legends yet, but um, I've heard it from numerous sources. And you know, it's the purists, the Twitter purists, are like, oh, you know, that's that sucks. I mean, we just if we want Facebook, we'll go to Facebook, you know, because Facebook's got this, you can write, you know, you can write tomes and tomes of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but what they're going to do is if they do do it, it'll be still squat. I mean, when you look at the timeline, it'll still be the same compressed timeline. Like you'll probably only see 140 characters, but it'll have something like read more and then you click and then it'll expand to show the full post. Personally, personally, I, I'm i actually pretty, if they do do it, I'm pretty happy. Because I'm I'm quite a verbose, as you probably all of you probably worked out. I'm quite a verbose dude, <laughs> and uh, and I you know and when I go off on a rant, I can't really compress it in 140 characters. It's just not possible. No, no. So, I don't think I've ever I've ever had anything under 140 characters. I you typically would have to do three tweets to get out what I need to say. Um, and then, right, and then when you do it, they get lost because they get. Um, so that's the other thing. It's like Twitter is very forgiving. So if you put out a lame tweet. You know, the average uh, tweet lifespan is eight minutes. So, you know, you can kind of crawl out of your hole eight minutes later and no one's going to really, you know, be too worried about it. Yeah, so okay. and the, other thing, the other thing is you can virtually, and because uh, things move so quick, you can test stuff really quickly. Like you can tweet all day and all night if you want to. You're not going to annoy anybody really. But if you do, imagine doing that on Facebook. Every three seconds you, you, you update something. I mean, you, all your friends leave you in. in yeah, the- that would that. Well, I do have people like that, and then I just hide them and don't follow them anymore. Um, right. <laughs> so there you go. Good point. Right. Um, so in, in terms so of- that's that basically that's my take on 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 Twitter in a nutshell as well. I could go on for hours and hours about that too. Yeah, no, that's, those that's are, those right. are the real big points. That's great. It's given me some things to think of that I hadn't considered before. So, uh, in in terms of just going to a slightly different uh, area about SEO now. 
Um, sure. And I, I don't know the answer to this, and it's sort of embarrassing that I don't know the answer because I'm in in this field, but because I haven't dealt with Twitter, I sort of haven't really been thinking about it, is do Twitter posts uh, get good SEO uh, rankings? Like do do posts, if you searched on a subject, is the Twitter post going to appear in the uh, the search results? Oh, that's a, that's a really good question because they, they have a love and Google and Twitter have a sort of a, a love-hate relationship and they went yeah. cold on each other. Um, for a few years, and and uh, they wouldn't they wouldn't uh, share the tweets. Okay. Um, but Google realized. Go- I mean, Google's great, but you know, when you type stuff into in the search engine and you look at the dates, that some of that stuff comes up. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I mean, I, I have no example. You might see information from two thousand and one, or you know, or some ridiculous date that's just not relevant. You know, to, maybe, you know, in internet terms, a post that was posted in two thousand and thirteen is like it's almost irrelevant now, right? Yeah, yeah, it could be. It depends, so, it depends on the context of the, the subject, I suppose. But, right, but I mean, it, in, you know, in technology terms, like if I'm if I want to know the latest plugin for blah. Oh yeah, of course, absolutely. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's two, I mean, it's a 2013 post. It's, it's virtually yeah. useless, right? Yeah, yeah. So Google's not good at real time. Real time, they just they're not good, and they've finally, I mean, they've re-engaged the love affair with Twitter, not because Twitter is all about real time. It's it's you can't get any more real time. You know, I mean, Egyptian Egyptian riot. I could be twi- you know, I could see someone. I could look out the window and see someone, um, you know, beat the crap out of an old lady, and I could I could tweet that, take a photo, and tweet that, and that could be live and seen by everyone in the world. Yeah, the second. W- yeah, within seconds, absolutely. Within seconds. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. imagine me, imagine me pinging it to 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 you know put it up on my blog and then pinging it to Google. No, 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 different. Absolutely, yeah. And yeah, that, it's that- not going to happen. I think that's the thing that really distinguishes Twitter from everything else is that instantaneous um, reaction that you can get uh, from from using it. And you get that a little bit with some of the other social media platforms, but it's still nowhere near as quick as Twitter. So, so Twitter is quick to get yes. your message out there. That's one thing I'm picking and, up from using it. Um, the other thing is, uh, you know, don't do it, but if you type my name, Hayden Stevenson, into Google, into Google, uh, hopefully, there's not too much bad stuff. But the first post, <laughs> basically, the first post that comes up will be my my Twitter account. Okay. It would be ranked. It would be ranked the highest. Yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah, Twitter. So it, for SEO purposes, it is great. And here's here's one last point. When I first kicked off, uh, when I first picked up kicked off stage, they still had this love affair going, and then they went before they went cold. And I tweeted, and stage was uh, was only Twitter back then. We've got other things attached to it now, but it was just Twitter, and. I remember my very first staged post, and I and I and I got onto analytics, and I watched that thing like a hawk. And within a day, I had traffic come in from 141 different sources. I only tweeted it, and I had my tweets show up in uh, AOL. I had them show up in Bing. I had them show up in Google, Yahoo. I had them show up in uh, some Russian website, and all sorts of places. 141 different places just from tweeting. Wow. So that's why I say that it's. I believe it's a foundation of all social media strategies. Social media marketing strategies should be Twitter because you just don't know where it's going to go, and also you can embed tweets, so people get a decent tweet and they will wrap it onto their blog. Yep. So it's a living piece of Twitter is on the blog. Yeah. And yeah. you don't and you don't know where their blog's going to go. It's crazy. I'm I'm starting to get excited. <laughs> Good. No, I was excited before because we've had this conversation before. This is, you know, for the benefit of the uh, the, the listeners to the podcast. But um, yeah, it's just it's amazing that you know Twitter's been around for such a long time, and I've, I have had bias to it. I'll completely admit, and I know a lot of other people I've spoken to go, "Oh, Twitter, oh no." They just, I think it's more. It's almost like a racist thing. They don't understand it, so therefore they hate it. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, and they but they don't. They can't really say why. They just go, "Oh yeah," but the, I think um, they're too focused on. There's a lot of people who you, who don't use Twitter effectively, but that's like any social media platform. Sure. And then they're posting what they've just had for breakfast, or you know, or some lame thing that like, people really don't care, <laughs> unless you're a, a really big time voyeur that's interested in the lives of everybody else and their weird things that they do. But True. um, but I, but I personally like I would not use Twitter as a personal tool. Like I just wouldn't bother. I don't think I could st- um, stand the the idea of doing that. But using it as a business tool, that's what I'm all about. So then that, that's what the listeners are about. So so the next question we want to go on to is: You've created this platform called Staged. 
to uh -huh. maximize the use of Twitter. So tell us a bit about how Stage came about and how people can actually use it to, to start leveraging Twitter. How did it come about? Uh, that's a, that could be a long one. <laughs> uh, it's, it came about, I used to be a full-time blogger and I made it um, my mission to write one blog post every single day for a year. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I did it. And then upon about, uh, about a year and a half into having this blog up, um, it got hacked and I never, ever got it back. And it basically destroyed my, my whole motivation to blog again. Right. And I, you know, and I had court, I had sponsors and everything. I mean, I was making passive income just from the blog. I, I had insurance companies on there and all sorts of things, you know? Yeah. And, um, and it was basically, it was freedom based. So I, I had gold and silver companies. They, they'd, um, you know, sponsored ads on there and everything. And, you know, it's a great little money maker. And, um, but the, by the, but what I learned from the research, so I really dug deep is that the post that, the post that really did well, um, were the ones that just had a simple, um, video on them, uh, you know, a YouTube video, I, I whack a YouTube video on there. And then I would, um, just write, you know, a couple of lines of, uh, commentary and, and wrap it up and, and they get the most, they get the most engagement, the most, and the most comments and, um, the most shares. I was like, well, no, I'm going to spend hours and hours and hours writing these other blog posts and get nothing. Right. So, okay. so just, my just, just, sorry to interrupt you. Just to clarify, yeah. the videos that you were putting up were they videos that you created, or were they just ones you were pulling off YouTube? Just off YouTube. Okay. I'm, cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I never. I've never. Up until recently, I've never made videos. Okay. Cool. It's, yeah. No, no, it's just I just you know um, topical things like uh, you know there's, there's some. Gold report come out, and I just sort of swipe it off, swipe it off YouTube, and yeah, yeah, embed it, and then and then I, comment on it. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's when you're really pressed for time, that's a really quick way to to do it. And you know, and what I used to, my blog post used to rank higher than the the YouTube video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is co this is a, a very wise and common practice by uh, people who want to build up authority is to pull stuff that's already being talked about, that's already popular, that already has some thing created, and then put your spin on it. Um, so it's not, it's a great idea. So that's, the, so that's the, that was the takeaway from, from that. And then stage, first stage version is probably like version 5.0 now, but version uh, 1.0 mm -hmm. was all about, we would, um, we still actually have this aspect in stage and it's still a vital, a vital part, but we, we, instead of having blog posts, putting, um, you know, putting a, a video on a blog post, we just, we, with a click of a button, we can create a one page website. We can pull a YouTube video from YouTube, wrap it on a one page website, and post it out to Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and uh, some other place I've forgotten. But, <laughs> yeah, but, um, and we could achieve essentially the same thing. So this is this is the stat, the key stat for me is on even though I'd I'd done this thing for a year, this blog, and I posted every single day, I had three hundred sixty five posts you know, across my heart, and my biggest traffic day was something like like a hundred views. I you know for for the day on a blog, mm -hmm. and I've heard I've heard that on average, um, you know, it's about thirty to fifty. So I was kind of doing better than average. Uh, so I was getting about 100, 100 a day or something, and and uh, but I would using staged with with the click of a mouse, I could get one hundred fifty views doing that. So instead of spending hours and hours coming out this post, click of a mouse and and whap it out to Twitter, and I get one hundred fifty views on it. So and you can do and you could make. Um, we call them stages. It's a one page website. You mm -hmm. can make, you know, 50 of them in the space of half an hour if you wanted to. It's just a, it's just a mouse click. Wow. Okay. So, so that was, that was, uh, and that, that kind of blew my mind. But, um, and back then Google's algorithm, um, was they were, they loved us. So we just click a button and then with the, within two days, we'd have a, uh, a you know, first page ranking on, on Google, but, they changed their algorithm. I think that what are they up to? The caterpillar now? What's the latest? Oh, yeah, it's like, I can't uh, it's up. caterpillar or, or kangaroo or something. I forgot what the <laughs> kangaroo droppings. You know, yeah, kangaroo droppings. I think that's the latest <laughs> algorithm change. That's our official one for uh, the business marketing show. Google's <laughs> latest algorithm is kangaroo droppings. You've heard <laughs> so, it first. So, <laughs> so once kangaroo droppings came out, uh, that basically all the advantage of of that part of our business went. So once again, that, and then that went back to Remember, I said that Twitter is reliable. Mm -hmm. um, so, we what I found is we cannot rely on Google to always be there for us. You cannot one algorithm change can kill your business model. But Twitter traffic remains the same, and we got traffic every single day from Twitter. Mm -hmm. Slowly but surely, it's the it's the tried and true and faithful. It never stops. 
doesn't matter what you do, you can't, it, it, it still keeps coming. So yeah. we thought, okay, so we're going to build our business model, not upon sand, it's upon something that ne- is virtually never changes. And that's what crystallized um, stays into being, um, switching from being a video-based, um, video-based uh, sort of marketing platform to being, a, a, that only being a portion, but we're a Twitter, we're a true Twitter focus. So yeah, okay. if I was to, if I was to sum staged up, I'd say it's it's the only true one stop shop suite of uh, web based smart tools built for busy marketers to heavily automate the, the the growing of your audience. It automates the creating and sharing of content, and, it, and we brand it to you, and to massively streamline your engagement on Twitter. Um, the three key words there. Um, our our mantra at stage is grow, share, engage. These are the three big words because. When you remove all the clutter and fluff, these are the three most important things to focus on with social media marketing. There are there is nothing else. You're either you've got to grow your grow your audience. Mm. If you've got one one Twitter follower, what's you, what's going to happen for you? Nothing, right? Yeah, yeah. You've got you've got to share content, and it can't be garbage, right? It's got to be it's got to be uh, you know, it's got to have, be valuable to your audience, mm-hmm. and then you've got to engage with your people. I mean, just blasting stuff out. I mean, there is value in that. But there's, there's, it's magnified greatly if you engage with the people that that like your stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and look, that, that uh, it's like, that makes complete sense. And that's how I, I do believe people should look at social media. Is exactly that: grow, share, and engage makes complete sense. And so, right. um, if what I forgot to say is that people, you know, staged is a platform that people can go and just sign up and get a. You have a free account. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. they can just go and. Uh, go to stage.com and sign up and try it and experiment with this. And uh, maybe while you listen to the podcast, go and sign up for your free account and then you can follow through with the podcast on what we're talking about and you'll see when you log in what uh, what Hayden's talking about. So there's no uh, credit card details or anything you've got to put in. You just 14-day free trial offer. No, sorry, no, 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 sorry no, that's full time. That's, that's the other thing yeah. I'm looking at. Sorry. Yeah, Scrap yeah. No, it's, a, it's, it's, a, a, it's completely it's a free. True, it's a true free trial. It's a true, it's no... Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's not even a trial. It's, a, it's, a, it's this, the, the basic entry level to staged is completely free. And as far as you know, it's, it will stay that way. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, yeah, but then there's different upgrades depending on how much you want to use them and what uh, what your plans are for the the platform. So, but that, that that's a good thing. You can get in there and start using it, get used to it, see if it's a good fit before you have to commit to anything. You don't even have to put in credit card details, and then you can uh, find out what it's like and go from there. So, so that's probably a good idea if you listen to the podcast, unless you're out in the middle of uh, you know going for a walk or something, you can't do it. But if you're at home in front of your computer, maybe go and set up an account and check it out. So, so who is best suited for using Stage? Is it, do, do you find, have you had any people that have more success with this platform than others, any particular industries? Oh, that's a good one. You know, you know basically, basically, I believe Stage will work for just about any business we have. There are some real bizarre ones. Like one of my buddy, one of my best buddies, uh, I don't know if I should be saying this on the air, but he's an exorcist, right? And... Uh, how do you market an exorcism business? You know, who believes that stuff? Yeah, yeah. this and, is a great example because so most know, people are going, okay, yeah, how would you how would you do yeah. that? I mean, typically you would think it would be a referral-based sort of business. Um, and, you know, that's, yeah, so sorry, keep going. <laughs> no, it works, it works great because it goes back to um, one of the points I made is that there's a, there's a – uh, there's a market for every single topic on the, on the under the sun on, on Twitter. So uh, paranormal is huge. You can yeah, find oh, yeah. the paranormal niche is massive. Yeah, so, yeah. so he can he's he's got millions of people. To, well, I don't. Oh, there's five hundred million people on to a registered accounts. So, yeah. there, literally, there'll be millions of people who who are interested in spooks and stuff like that. Yep. And there'll be a large percentage that have spooks that want want to get rid of him. Yep. And and this bloke, he can uh, he can get rid of him. He doesn't have to you know, show up to your house with, uh, with candles and chants and. And you know, watch people spin the head spin around. He doesn't need any of that stuff. He can do it remotely. So you know, he just closes his eyes and and, and zaps them, and they're gone. So, um, and Twitter is perfect, you know. Yep. So um, he he uses it. But so basically, any if 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 he can use it, then basically I think anybody can use it, right? So <clears throat> um, marketing and advertising has always um, and most likely always will be an essential part of business. Um, most. Serious businesses begrudge paying for advertising, but they know that when they stop doing it, the sales and revenues take a dive. And um, I think by using Stage, you will save 
um, massive amounts of time, you'll leverage very powerful marketing technology and have a very clear and powerful advantage over competitors that either do not know about us or are just too plain cheap to invest in marketing business. And just a couple of examples from our customer files, right? Mm -hmm. um, affiliate marketers love staged because um, they're able to ultra target their audience in any niche like weight loss and weight loss is huge, right? Weight loss is huge. Yeah. Uh, you know, network markers that we get lo loads of network markers, you know, because I mean, within the network marketing niche, there's, there's, there's tons of sub niches because each company's got its own particular deal. You know, they might be selling gold, they might be doing Bitcoin, they might be doing weight loss, they might be doing uh, anti aging, you know? Yeah. And all of these things, all of these markets exist on Twitter and they're very e easy to find. Um, direct sales companies love stage because it has, um, when I say, um, Direct sales network marketing companies love stage because it has the power to transform even the laziest dead wood sales reps into productive markers because it's system driven. Um, yeah. Stage gives it gives each you know it, because it's it's very systematic. It gives each person a a quantifiable daily activity track to you know to do something every day. You know, um, one of the big failings of the industry is that people don't know what to do. They're not business people. They're just uh, people that need extra money, and they they, they latch onto the hype and hoopla. hoopla. Of course, yeah, been been there myself. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if they're not given a path to run on, then you know, woe well is them. You know, mm. um, local businesses uh, can use a stage platform to build a highly targeted audience um, that's you know kind of close enough to walk into the store and buy the goods and services. We've got a guy who's got a pizzeria in San Diego, and uh, he. Um, his business not going down the tubes, but it wasn't doing that well because there's a fair bit of competition in that, in that arena, right? Yeah, of course. And and Tuesday, it's, it's kind of intuitive, but Tuesday was like his worst day. And uh, I said, okay, well, let's do a little test. Let's apply staged to Tuesday. So we'll, we'll make specials go out um, to Twitter to people in San Diego, um, and they'll get two for one on Tuesdays only. And they've got to bring in their mobile phone and show the, you know, show it, show yep. the tweet or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And he gets back to me a couple of months later. Hey, so, so how's it going, mate? He goes, just guess which day is my busiest day now. I said, it's Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday. He says, yeah, you got it. So that that for me was a real, a real, a real boost as well. Yeah, so that's, that, that's awesome. It's, it's super easy to do as well. You know, it's just because um, no one because no one's focused on Twitter. It's it's like uh, it's not necessarily shooting fish in a barrel, but it's. You, the competition is just not really there, you know. Yeah. So, um, so, so, what would uh, like in terms of targeting? Because, uh -huh. say, coming from a novice, um, how specific can you nut down with Twitter in terms of demographics and geographical locations? So, how specific can you get with Twitter? Okay. Well, they they've got a bunch. Their their um, advanced search features really slick. We we try and automate that to the best we can. Like uh, to there's a limit what you can do with the API. Uh, API is what um, for people that don't, don't know what that word is, it, or that acronym is, it's basically where um, our software can tie directly into the backbone of Twitter, and we then we can manipulate their database to to serve up results for us. That's gotcha. what an API. That's what an API does, and their API doesn't really allow us that much flexibility. But if you are on native Twitter, you can you can do some pretty slick stuff, and and uh, you can get down to about two point five kilometers of your business. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. But we we can't. But what I do is sometimes that sometimes that that um, that results will be so small it's not really worth it anyway. There might only be five people in your area, you know, that are on Twitter at that time. So it's it's not really that that useful. What I do, what I train people to do is like if you're in San Diego, for example, use that example. Um, you just go after. Yeah, um, we 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 go after people who are, who are following uh, the San Diego Chamber of Commerce. Um, the restaurant near you, beside you, might have a Twitter a Twitter followers. The um, the sports team's got Twitter followers. Um, uh, anything yeah. to do with San Diego, because okay. you know there's people there, San San Diegoans or whatever you call yeah, them. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So you if you you if you're a pizza pizzeria in the heart of San Diego, it's going to work. And if it doesn't work for them, it might work for their brother who lives next door to you. Yeah, yeah, you know? that makes perfect sense. So basically, you're piggybacking off those other popular San Diego San Diego related uh, Twitter accounts and Absolutely. posts and posts. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So you Absolutely. again, that's leverage. You're leveraging uh, stuff that's been built before you to take yes. to your advantage. I completely get that. We're leveraging their audience. They've already built up an audience. Let's say let's say it's the San Diego 
whatever their football team, whatever, right? yep. then, uh, you know, they, let's say they've got 50,000 followers. Those people, I mean, the chances are they live in San Diego, right? Or they're yeah, families. Yeah, yeah, Diego, yeah. So. Very, very high chance. Absolutely. Yeah. So we just leverage those people. Uh, and so, and we, and we automate it. We automate, we've got it so that we can just go put in, we call them big dogs. So let's say it was, uh, let's say it was a San Diego chamber of commerce. We'd go get their username, wrap it into our, into our software. And then we've got this thing called smart follow. And we just, um, basically push go and then it will just go and it will follow all their followers for you. Cause when, with tw- the, the key distinction with Twitter is that when you follow somebody, uh, it's not like Facebook where you got to ask, hey, hey, can I be your friend? What you do is it's pay it forward. You be their friend, and then a certain percentage will be your friend back. Yeah, right? Yep. Yeah. And so it's very it's proactive marketing. It's not reactive, it's proactive. You go, you just go and knock on it's basically it's a virtual knock on the door, right? So you go and follow it and then they'll follow you back. And then when you this is the key point, man. When you follow somebody, they get a notification in their um tw- in their Twitter notification saying, um, in your case, it it's following you. And if they hover over your picture, up comes a full bio of you, your bio with you with your, um, your bio description and your link. And if you've got that properly, uh, what do you call it, um, optimized, mm-hmm. it'll be a call to action to go through to your site. So That's just amazing. the process of following somebody can be a lead generation avenue for you. Most of my leads for my business come from just from following people. Yeah, I, my little light bulbs are going off in my head, left, right, and center now. So um, I'm I'm starting to get all these different ideas. Oh, okay, yeah, I could use it for this. I could try it for that. And I'm sure if there are people listening to the podcast that they'd be having this very same thought. So that's that's brilliant. So uh, have you got some pro? Uh, t- or oh, some of the things you've been giving us are, are great tips, but any other uh, Twitter pro tips you would have for the audience today? Sure. I'm going to expand upon the one that um, the bio. Um, this this is something that even the, the gurus don't really do. Um, and I, and I look at this every day. Um, typically what a person will do is is they'll, they'll put something in their bio, Lane, my name is Bob and I eat hamburgers. Yep. That's, and this that, is a Twitter bio, just to be this, clear. This is in a Twitter bio, right? Okay, You've got yep, a bio, yep. bio area. Yep. And uh, that does nothing for anybody. It doesn't do anything for Bob. It doesn't, I mean, not. typically when you follow somebody, before a person follows you back, they will go and check you out to see you're not some, you know, serial child rapist or some, you know, some nasty piece of work or <laughs> yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. They're going to check you out. You know, it's just human nature. And when they check you out, up pops your bio description with your link, and if you've got a link, a link there. And if you've got garbage, it's a wasted opportunity. And I see so many so-called social media gurus who don't who don't use that properly. They'll put in yep. a string of hashtags and some gobbledygook that when I look at it, I'll go pass, and I, I won't even follow them back, and I won't even go to check out who they are or what they do. And if they'd just been a little bit smarter, they would have had me as a follower, and perhaps I would have gone through the site, filled out the form, bought their stuff. You know, it's yeah. just. It, it's so easy. So the most important piece of real estate on Twitter is your bio. And it must be a headline with a clear call to action. Mm-hmm. And here's why, here's why that is so important. When you follow, this is you personally, when you follow, like, or retweet somebody, your bio goes into the notifications and it often goes into the email, exposing those people to your headline and your website link. I've had people join some of my things and I, I don't know where they came from. So I, I, I get on the phone and I call them up. Where'd you find me? Oh, I got an email from you. I don't, you know, I don't do email marketing. So I says, so I says, <laughs> so you, so you're going, how did they get an email from you? Yeah, yeah. So I says, how, how did you get an email from me? Oh, no, no, no. It was a Twitter notification. Ah, I, you followed, you followed me yeah, and then yeah. it had the link to your deal in the, in the, in the, in the email. And I went and I like, I like what I saw and I enjoyed it. I went, sweet. You know, so that's extremely powerful, right? That is, and then, that's huge. And so just, just the process of following, liking, and retweeting another person, it instantly gets you into their notifications, which instantly, and if they're like, who's this dude? You know, because it's human curiosity. Who liked my stuff? Who followed me? They hover over, they hover over your, your, uh, your little um, bio, your little image thing, little icon, right? Mm-hmm. And up pops your, your bio. And if it's a good ad, you're going to get, you're going to get leads. You're going to, right? Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, so a good example would be to go and look at yours, I suppose, if you're happy for people to go and look at your bio. You've, sure, you've, sure. Um, is it something – have you got it in front of you? Can, can you read your bio out off Twitter so people can get an idea of what, uh, you, what you've, you've said, if you feel okay to do yeah, that? Yep. 
Yep, I'll just I'll just pull it up now. Uh, just, just give me two seconds. Because, yeah, no, it's one of those things. And, and the bios are important uh, in any social media platform, whether it's Twitter or LinkedIn or, um, you know, LinkedIn's a business platform, so people should definitely have a, a relative bio. But uh, what do you think about having having some type of call to action in your bio? Is that something that you would recommend? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, some people can can come off like, oh, it's a bit spammy. But, you know, if you're in business, you can't – if you're not annoying people on a daily basis, you're not probably not work, pushing your business hard enough, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you've got to be You've got to be aggressive. You've, you've got to be. And, and you can do it tastefully. Like, here's mine. I mean, you might all say, oh, what a scammer. You know, what a scammy, spammy guy. But this is mine. And uh, I say co-founder of stage.com. And I put the link in there. Mm-hmm. Um, Unleash the true power of Twitter, and I make that a hashtag. Yep. Um, this is another little pro tip as well. If you make if you make some of the words in the hashtag, don't go nuts with it. But if you just use like the pertinent words and you hashtag them, so you go power of hashtag sign Twitter to create a traffic uh, traffic lead generation and sales explosion. Join free now, right? So I get I get people joining for free every single day. Because I follow, because my system follows people every day. Yes. So, so, and they just hover over. Who's Hayden Stevenson? It's got my picture. Use your picture. Don't put some. Yeah, yeah. Lane. You've got, you've got. You're, it's a social media. Social meaning humans. If you put a picture of a donut there, uh, you, know, you might, that. you might get some cops or something. I don't know. But, yeah, yeah, no, uh, I, I know, I know what you're saying. People use, yeah. um, you know, avatars and things that are, yeah. you know, Bart Simpson or yeah. someone like that. <laughs> 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 yeah. No. You got to, you know, and um, people want to deal with real people, you know, and 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 I'm, dude, I'm no movie star. I'm just some regular cat. And you, but if you if you if you kind of, um, bear your soul a little bit and put your picture there, people can, you know, people dig that, you know. Yeah, yeah, it makes you real, and, and, and they can bond with you so much. I mean, they're when they when they're tweeting back and forth, they're looking at your picture. Oh, you know, they can kind of visualize that. Oh, this is this guy here speaking to me, rather than a donut or a piece of dried dog turd or something. You know, it's a, it's a you <laughs> yeah, know. That, yeah. Right. <laughs> Good example. You know. So that, I'll, I'll read it one more time. So, co-founder of Stage Stage dot unleash the true power of Twitter to create a traffic lead generation and sales explosion. Join free now. That's my that's my call to action. But yeah. what's important here is that the um the you've got two places where you can put the link when you're creating a Twitter account. Um, you put it in the bio. You can you have a bio description area where the main body text goes in, and then you have a, a designated area put, where you put the URL. Put the link in both places because when if you access Twitter by mobile, the um the the designated uh the designated what do you call it the URL spot quite often doesn't show up. So they'll see you okay. call to action, but there's no link to click on. They're like, where do where do I go? Yeah, yeah, okay, good, and very this is, good tip. Yeah, so have it in both places. Have it in both, and if you have to if you have to have it nowhere, I mean, if you only can have it in one spot, have it in the bio description description area. Yeah. You know, even if you have to chop down your description to fit it in, do it because uh, there's a limitation to the description. Like yeah, how, it's how a little many... bit. Long. It's about 160 characters. Okay, so, okay. You know, so you know, don't don't go putting War and Peace in there. But you know, the key point: call to action. Its job, its job is to sell somebody to click on your link. That's the sole reason. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, and your okay, link it's... takes them to your website. Takes you to your website, and if and if and if your website, you know. It's not that it's not that high converting. Mm-hmm. What I recommend you do is you send it through to a lead capture page. And if you don't have a lead capture page, send it through to um, the social media that you predominantly hang out on. So if you're a real Facebook person, yeah, um, send them through to your Facebook Facebook um, profile or your Facebook page or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. So that you can at least th- um, they will become a friend and you can befriend them and start the business relationship that way. Yeah, um, yeah, it, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever, but I yep. mean, ideally, it's I, I'm a firm believer in the, the place that you ultimately control your traffic is is your website, and the goal of all of these social media platforms is to get people to the thing you control the most, um, and then interact with them from there. Whether that's your thought pattern, or not, I'm, I'm not sure, but um, but yeah, I, I'm all about getting lead, getting leads. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Getting getting people's getting people's de- details is everything because if you uh you know if you send them to a site and it's not you know life gets in the way you know they're on your site and then suddenly the dog does a whoopsie on the you know yeah, on the car yeah absolutely and then you know and then yeah. and then Windows updates and then they've lost your site 
But if they've put your details in, at least, at least you can hit them up. Or, or if they've joined you on Facebook, at least you know, right? And then you can hit it up and say, hey, yo, what's up, right? Yeah. Um, so I always, I always want to get somebody to leave me with something. So that, yeah, you know, yeah. if life gets in the way, at least I can continue the interaction, you know. Yeah, great point. So so, so, so when people are on Twitter, if they want to go and have a look at Hayden's um, Twitter uh, setup, um, you're at Staged CEO. I'll put that uh, on. No, the one, I, the one I use is, the one I, I hang out on the most is at Staged Founder. Okay, at, at Staged Founder. Yeah. Um, so check out uh, Hayden on there. I'll put that. In the show notes as a as a link. Thank you. Um, so, a- anything else to finish up with? Because we've taken up enough of your time, <laughs> and uh, we're. we're um... I, I've got one uh, more. One last. One last. Yeah, yeah absolutely. For, for people that are a li- little bit more advanced, like yep. people like yeah, yeah, I get, I get what you said so far. Um, this is. Um, uh, I haven't got a name for the strategy, but it's a combination of three things. Okay, mm-hmm. what I do is I use Twitter to send traffic to your blog. You know, where you where you provide some really cool content. So that's part one. Second, use a Facebook tracking pixel to uh, to build a list of those visitors that come from Twitter. Yeah. Okay, so this is like a, a two minute cut and paste project on your blog, mm-hmm. and then and then with your Facebook ads, run your Facebook ads only to people who have visited that blog or that site. So they've already indicated that they're interested in your content. And they already know, like, and trust you, and um, and it's going to make. It's, and then you know you, they, your ad's going to be following them around on Facebook, right? Coming right, from that, yeah. so yeah, that, yeah. that's a, that's a great way to combine um, paid advertising and and free advertising. Yeah, fantastic. And being someone who's into remarketing, I completely get that. So yeah, so you're sending the traffic from Twitter through to your Facebook, um, sorry, through to your website. Yeah, through to your bloggy website. Bloggy You've website. Got- Put the Facebook uh, tracking pixel on there. And then uh, the remarketing ads will be following them around on Facebook. Would you do it with Google as well? Or... I don't know. I don't know much about Google. I don't know much about Google, mate. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. So, but it, that's a strategy that could work for both because um, you know it's just as easy to have both on there. If you if you're doing advertising, because we do a lot of remarketing stuff for clients, where we're doing Facebook and we're doing uh, Google. So you can get the benefit of both worlds. So that strategy could work across both of those, basically doing the same thing. So very good tip, mate. That's fantastic. So so thank you very much for taking the time to come on the podcast. Thanks for inviting me. It's been very enlightening for me as someone who puts their hand up freely and says, I do, know, do not know much about Twitter. I certainly know a bit more now, and uh, it's given me some insights to take the next step. And now that I've signed up for staged um, at stage.com, um, I can expand and work out your system, which is always improving and always getting uh, additional things added to it, as I've, yes. as I've been witnessing. So uh, w- well done. Thanks very much, buddy. Very cool. So thanks, Hayden, and thank you for listening, and we will catch you on the next episode. You've been listening to The Business Marketing Show. You can find us at businessmarketingshow.com on iTunes, SoundCloud and Stitcher.